Hello, you're watching buzzlocal.tv. Today we're talking to Rick Hancox from FCNB. He's uh, the Financial and Consumer uh, Services Commission talking to us about elder financial abuse. This is a kind of abuse that's not often uh, talked about or addressed when dealing with abuse, but is something that is facing a lot of seniors. Rick, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Well, what is uh, financial abuse towards elders? What is that? The interesting thing is it's uh, an area that's not very well defined. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, there are definitions of mental abuse and physical abuse uh, in various pieces of legislation, but, but the term financial abuse is not well defined. And to give you some examples of, of the spectrum that financial abuse can cover, uh, it could be everything from uh, you know a senior who gives her credit card to uh, the home care worker to have, to go out and buy her groceries, and uh, and while out buying the groceries, the uh, home care worker decides to use the credit card to refill her gas tank, mm -hmm. and you know then it can snowball from there to the to, to the other end of the spectrum where uh, you know uh, someone can can get power of attorney over financial affairs and and end up uh, taking possession of the house and. Uh, and the retirement assets and so on and so forth and and there's certainly lots of examples of, of that going around okay and how prevalent is this in New Brunswick well again because it's an ill-defined area it's not a well-reported area mm -hmm. but in a recent survey that we did uh, indications are that about a quarter of New Brunswickers say they know of someone who they believe has been financially abused mm -hmm. Now the good news is that last time we did this survey, 22% of those folks said they reported it to somebody. This time round, 34% said they reported it to somebody. So if this is an issue that is happening quite often or can happen quite often to members of, uh, say, vulnerable members of our society, are we just becoming more aware of it now or is it, be is it becoming more prevalent? And whatever situation, how do you address it? Well, the, the, trying to answer the trends uh, is is more difficult. It's certainly becoming a more talked about uh, subject. And as an organization, we've been working with regulators across Canada and, in fact, across North America in trying to determine how this can be addressed. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that's uh, a result of uh, our recent consultation across New Brunswick to try and get a handle on uh, what the issues are and what some of the solutions might be. Could you give us an idea of what some of the solutions would be? Would it be someone to overview somebody's finances or would it be uh, support for elders who who might suspect they've been a victim of elder financial abuse? So the, uh, the the consultation we did really focused on a number of, of areas, and and if I were to summarize the recommendations we came up with, it really fall into to four main categories. Mm -hmm. The first is legislative definition around financial abuse, and protections for those who report it. So, for example, if uh, I'm a investment advisor, mm -hmm. and Grandma comes in with uh, her son-in-law and he says okay I want you to cash in all the investments and transfer them to my account if the uh, investment advisor has some concerns around that you know they they need to have a place to report it they need to have what we would call a safe harbor to say I'm not going to act on those instructions right away uh, mm -hmm. until I kind of figure out if this is is okay so Legislative changes and protections for reporting, um, support for industry professionals when they do report it, that they're not going to fall afoul of any privacy legislation or, or any other legislation that, that requires them to follow client instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, educational initiatives uh, on what financial abuse is uh, and how it might be detected. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's kind of a follow-on on some of the work that we've done with the medical community about detecting signs of, uh, of abuse. And then, you know, there's lots of organizations and, and agencies that deal with seniors. 
and promoting good interagency cooperation so that uh, w when you have concerns that perhaps a senior is being abused, you know who to contact and you can work with other organizations, whether it be social services, health care, uh, law enforcement, uh, regulators, to really get to the heart of the matter and address it. In New Brunswick, we have almost 20% of our population is uh, senior and this is only expected to grow over the uh, over the coming years mm -hmm. and when you think about uh, you know the baby boomer cohort as that sort of grew up through the whole era of RSPs and wealth uh, accumulation and so on and so forth now they're moving into retirement years they, they've, they've got a pot of money to help them through retirement that makes them a, a target mm -hmm. and uh, you know to quote the uh, the famous US bank robber Willie Horton when asked why do you rob banks he said well that's easy that's where the money is uh, and so seniors in general as a group you know mm -hmm. have have got to wealth accumulated for retirement now that's not to say every senior is is wealthy mm -hmm. but they're part of a target uh, group that uh, you know, that uh, can be picked on. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. That's Rick Hancocks with the FCNB talking to us about elder financial abuse. It's a serious issue, affects many people population, and with New Brunswick's growing elderly population, it's something we're going to have to keep an eye on and be wary for. You're watching buzzlocal.tv. I'm Alex Corbett. Thanks for watching.